Hi guys, welcome to Metal and Rock Zone. Today it's Iron Maiden and uh, they're on the Future Pass tour. This is gig number two on the tour at Prague. First night of two. There are two nights that they play. They played yesterday and then they'll play again tonight. And uh, I actually finally, I started, I saw them last year around the same time here in Prague and I did one of my first reviews was from there. So you can check that out and you can see how far I have come. The t-shirt is the same, but the surroundings are different. I am now in a studio. I did it at the living room at home before. Uh, on this video, I want to kind of talk about the overall experience, the band performance, the show, a little bit about the set list and how it was mixed and obviously give, give it my rating. And just a warning, guys, this is not as my 9.5 that I gave last year. I... This is going to be a difficult one for me anyway, because I love Iron Maiden, obviously. Uh, before we start, then, yeah, give us a like uh, on this video, but follow us also on social media. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok, where we share shorter videos, photos, different information than you see here on our channel. So, so if you want more content from us, then hit us up there. And yeah, push like on this video. It helps because we want more metalheads to see this. So the more you push like, the more metalheads will see this video. Um, so when this gig was announced, I was a little bit kind of skeptic because as I said, I saw them last year, they went on the Legacy of the Beast tour, where they're kind of playing uh, all the kind of hits, you know. They did three Senyutsu songs on the last tour, uh, the last leg of the Legacy of the Beast tour, but then the other 12 songs were just like, you know, uh, can I play, um, Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden, all these kind of, the Trooper, all the stuff that we all know and love. So I was a little bit skeptic about this, but on the other hand, uh, I think the album Somewhere in Time for me was always a little bit of a mysterious Iron Maiden album somehow. And uh, I didn't realize back then what it actually would mean in their catalog. So I was curious to see this and I knew that there were songs of it like Alexander the Great, Caught Summer in Time and stuff like that that had never been played or Alexander the Great never been played live. And the other ones actually not so much since like 87, 8, 9, you know. So I was excited about it because I'd seen a lot of the other stuff multiple times and I wouldn't say it's getting tiring, but I, yeah, it was nice to be able to see something new. And... Uh, but yeah, you should be careful a little bit with what you wish for because last year I saw them, I gave them 9.5 and I was super psyched about it. And, and this turned out to be a very different experience. Uh, and uh, the album, as I said, Summer in Time is, is a little bit different. They used a lot of guitar synthesizers on that album. That was kind of the first time they used that. And I now, when I look at it, I can see the bridge from... Uh, was it Peace of Mind or Power Slave? I don't remember which one it was before that. But I can see this album as a kind of a bridge into then Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, where they just used outright keyboards. And I like these songs, you know, there's this uh, The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, for example, on this album. I've always liked that song. Strange in a Strange Land, Caught Summer in Time, Wasted Years, obviously a great song. They did this album coming off of a 350 day tour where they did like 180 gigs and they were really, really kind of drained. So it has some signs of it, you know, th there's no Bruce Dickinson song, I think, on, stra on, on Summer in Time. And Adrian Smith came with like two or three like full songs where he owns the whole credit of the song, which was not something that was common for the band at that time. So and I feel, I feel that you can feel it in the songwriting and everything. There is something with that album. There is some sort of a sadness in it that I, I didn't feel in the other albums before. There was more aggressiveness maybe, and in this one maybe a little bit more sadness. Maybe that was it. They were tired from the road. And they say that themselves, that they were completely drained. Um, and then Senyutsu, which is kind of the other, you know, they're mixing those two albums, the latest album. I've been listening quite a lot to it because I really wanted to like it. And I do like it when I listen to it kind of continuously. Um, and then, yeah, I, would, I was going to find out that this gig, I mean, I saw three songs last year and uh, that was fine. But on this gig, I knew that they would do more. So, and I actually didn't realize until I got there to, to, to this um, O2 Arena that this is the first time that I actually see Iron Maiden indoor for over 20 years or around 20 years or something like that. And uh, yeah, the, the, the place was sold out, obviously. Uh, there was a lot of cool new merch, like kind of themed towards this tour, as they do all the time. And uh, but I could see that there was the inflation is up. Now you're buying a ticket for like, uh, sorry, T-shirt for like 45 euros or something. It used to be like 
usually around 30 or something. So the prices were super high. And uh, and they, yeah, they had the Raven 8s warming up for them or opening for them. And it was interesting, you know, the Raven 8s was playing for a full house, like 20,000 people in the house. And uh, I don't think a lot of opening acts get this atmosphere that the Iron Maiden opening acts get. And I wonder why. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, obviously, Iron Maiden is playing a, re a relatively short set. People know that by now, like 15 songs. So obviously, they need to maybe bring, you know, people don't want to miss anything. And then they bring in maybe a little bit better opening acts. You know, like the Raven Aids last year was Airborne. So these are bands that can kind of hold their own. And uh, it was interesting to see that there was everyone was already there when Raven Aids was finishing. So yeah, after Raven Aids, there was like a, I don't know, 40 minute break before Iron Maiden came on, on stage. And, uh, and the opening song was uh, Caught Somewhere in Time, which was really cool. Um, yeah, I think they have, hadn't really played that since like 87 or 88 or something like that. And, uh, and you immediately, I felt like Bruce is really in, in good form here. He, he can really, really sing. It's, it's really interesting how he holds his voice and, uh, Kind of reminded me of I, I just saw Metallica in 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 Hamburg uh, last weekend and and it's the same with James he just gets better somehow with age and Bruce is really good. Uh, then they did Strange in a Strange Land which was also cool to see I had never seen those songs live and he also did a really good job there. And the third song was this Riding on the Wall from Senjutsu and that's a really cool song I like the guitar riffing there and it's kind of a old school song on that album somehow I feel and. Uh, and that, but apart from Bruce being in a good shape singing wise, his kind of crowd engagement was a little bit off. And I felt that he, he kind of uh, should have known better. I mean, this guy has been touring for like 30 years, 40 years or whatever with, with his band, 30 years probably uh, more. Yeah. And, uh, and he somehow misread the room, you know, he was speaking a very kind of sophisticated English humor and the Czechs just didn't get it, you know, and so it kind of fell flat on the floor and it didn't do anything. You should just have stuck to like telling them how much he loves them and loves their beer or whatever. That always works. Um, and then, yeah, it kind of, after those first three songs, it kind of fell off a little bit. There was this uh, Days of Future Past was the fourth song of Sanjutsu and uh, then the Time Machine and, the, and I was, yeah, I felt that kind of felt a little bit flat after the first three songs. And then The Prisoner was song number six. And there I was like, I was kind of waiting for that during the, the other two songs. I was a little bit bored. And The Prisoner is one of my favorite songs. So I kind of know it inside out. And when that started, then I realized, okay, there is something wrong here. Which I think it was also in the other three songs or other, other sorry, five songs before, the, the, even in the opening three songs that I liked. But I just didn't know what to compare it to. You know what I mean? So with The Prisoner, I know that song inside out. It was slowed down. There was something missing in the drum fills and there was just something off. And I had this feeling before, but I didn't, I couldn't put my finger on it, what it was. And, and it was a complete letdown of that song. Um, you know, super slowed down. Yeah, as I said, the drums fill were off somehow. And, uh, and that turned out to be something that I would notice more throughout the evening. And when I mentioned that to my friend, actually, who was with me there, then he said, yeah, um, why don't they never show the drummer on camera? And that was interesting because they were following the members and showing on a big screen next to the stage, like um, individual members, but they almost never showed the drummer. And, uh, and I, it was weird because Nico was super good here last year. There was nothing that I noticed on the concert last year that there was anything off, but there was something seriously off last night in, in in this concert and I don't know what it is. Um, so they did kind of play with Madness as song number eight and the same thing happened there. Super slowed down, something missing. It just didn't have that punch that it usually has. And uh, and I was thinking there, okay, so maybe it's just the, the second gig on the tour and they have like a lot of more gigs to do. So maybe they will kind of, you know, shake it together over time or something like that. Uh, the show. The show was really cool. I mean, like they had all these different themes that kind of followed the albums that or from which album that song was from. And uh, and there was some fire. There was uh, Eddie came on stage and at some point Bruce was shooting at him from a big cannon, you know, and uh, so they didn't really fail with that. I mean, they always deliver when it comes to a show. There was no Spitfire coming down, so they didn't play Aces High. But 
yeah, the other stuff was really cool and, and, and the setup worked. So I, th and I felt that the graphics, because their graphics are usually very cool, they kind of, they, they how do you say, they bloomed or, you know, they, they, they were enjoyable somehow because they were visible. There wasn't too much else going on. Uh, so, this, yeah, the show was good. Uh, the crowd engagement, as I said, wasn't on somehow, and that was missing. I mean, obviously, people were singing along in the songs and so on, but in between songs, when they were changing guitars and stuff like that, that was, that was totally off, and I was a little bit disappointed with that. The set list, guys, uh, 15 songs, five from Somewhere in Time, five from Sin 2, and then one of Iron Maiden, one of uh, Number of the Beast, one of Peace of Mind, one of Fear of the Dark, and one of... The seventh song, yeah, Can I Play With Madness. So I think they mixed it wrong. I think they should have done a legendary song earlier in the program, something to really get the crowd going. They didn't do that. They did two Caught Somewhere in Time songs. I mean, these are legendary songs, but these are not anthems that we've seen and we know how sound live with Iron Maiden. So that way, I think they could have gotten the crowd on board much, much better than they did. Uh, and I think there was this Death of the Celts, this Send You to Song. They should have skipped that. They should have done four Send You to Song in my mind and added one kind of legendary song in, or a classic one in, 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 instead. That was a hard one. Um, so 12 songs plus three in encore. Uh, all the encore songs were good. There was this Hell on Earth song of Send You to, which is a good live song. And there was the Trooper and there was Wasted Years. So that was good. Um, and there was still something there with the drums, I don't know, and I, I, I just couldn't unhear it. Um, so, it was, as I said, the second gig of the tour, and I think you could hear that. I mean, and, and I, I think it's, it's normal and natural, uh, but we, we kind of expect a lot from the performances of this band, you know, and if we talk about the individual performances of the band, then I think, yeah, Bruce was great, but he misread the room completely when it came to the crowd engagement. Like, uh, and I, th I felt that he he struggled singing on the slow tone versions. And I don't know, I, I've never sang a slow tone version of an Iron Maiden song, so I don't know how it is. But I felt that he, he, he struggled a little bit with that. Steve Harris is having a little bit of a hard day in the office when, when the drums are somehow off. I mean, these two are kind of, you know, in, inter inter intertwined somehow. So, so I, didn't, I didn't notice him and experience him as much in the front as I, I usually would have. Uh, and then, yeah, the guitar guys were all great. I mean, Yannick was being him, him, his usual self, and I felt that Adrian was shining a little bit more on this concert than on previous ones, maybe because, you know, Somebody in Time is kind of his album, even though he just wrote like three songs of it or something. Uh, but they, yeah, they, the guitar guys were good. Uh, so, now to the rating and review and uh, Last year I gave them 9.5 uh, and this was a huge drop. This was a letdown. Uh, this is one of my most favorite bands of all time. I heard them first when I was eight or nine years old. I'm going to have to give them 6.5. Um, I, I was thinking seven, but no, it's not going to be seven. Uh, the pros are that I saw those songs of Somewhere in Time that I haven't seen before. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be one of the few people alive that have seen Alexander the Great live in concert. And uh, it was good to see Wasted Years, Caught Somewhere in Time and Strange in a Strange Lot. And also Heaven Can Wait is a, a nice kind of anthem, anthemic song. So that was nice. Bruce was great. Um, I could say show guitars and so on, but I think for me that's the starting point. Uh, this is just a band of such a high standard that that sh just should always be on somehow. So I'm not really going to credit them with that because that's something I take kind of for granted. Uh, the negatives, yeah, they're obviously not somehow gelled together on those songs. That's obvious. But I also think that the drums play a big part in that because that's kind of the bottom layer of that song. You know, every song on a, or every for every band, you know, that has drummers. Uh, so that that was off, and and it kind of comes through the whole thing. And I don't feel that age. People are saying, "Oh, it's amazing that Nico didn't do this at 70." Blah blah. But I saw, I don't know, a 72-year-old Tommy Aldridge killing it with White Snake last year. And uh, yeah, I've seen the drummer in Uriah Heep in Sa uh, He's younger though in Saxon. Uh, I mean, there there are people this age that are out there kind of beating the shit out of the drums. So I'm not saying that. You know, he can't age or something, but I, 
I don't know. I just expect more somehow from them. And maybe, yeah, maybe there was something off. Maybe there was a technical problem or something. I don't know, whatever it is. The setlist mix, as I said, that was off. They could have put uh, stronger songs up front to get the crowd. And due to that, some parts of the show were just plain boring, you know, like, and that's not, I don't feel good when I pay hundred and something euros for a ticket to see my favorite band and I'm bored. That shouldn't be the way it is. Um, so yeah, and the, that also partly because the crowd engagement was kind of completely off and, and, and so on. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, so where do they go from here? You know, like, obviously there's a lot, um, uh, a lot of gigs left on this tour, but I have a feeling somehow, and this is the first time I get that feeling, that we're kind of reaching the end of the road with this band. I don't, I don't see them going on multiple world tours like this. Um, and uh, maybe they will play some selected uh, festivals, large festivals or something. But of course, this feeling is now based off of this experience. If you would have spoken to me last year, I would have said, yeah, they have 10 years, 10 good years left in them. And this was a stark difference from seeing Metallica in the weekend. Um, you can actually see my documentary from that here. Um, it was a big difference because with Metallica, I felt now, well, okay, they have 10 good years left. But last year, I didn't necessarily feel that with Metallica. And now I feel that with Iron Maiden the opposite way. I feel like we're reaching the end of the road. But as I said, 30 gigs left. Maybe it improves. Maybe it gets much better. And maybe they just need time to play together. But it's silly. It's Iron Maiden. You know, we have high standards here. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it, guys. I would be curious to hear what you think. If you were there, tell me what you experienced or if you saw them in Ljubljana in Slo Slovenia or if you see them later on that tour after you see this video, then tell me if you agree with me. Uh, check my Metallica No Repeat video, as I said before. Uh, or I called it actually like a documentary because it's 35 minutes, but it's two days and a lot of stuff to talk about. On the channel, we also have upcoming, I'm going to see Muscle Crew and Death Leopard on Friday, so I'll do a review on that. And I'm seeing Kiss for the final time, but they've told me that a million times that it's the final time, so I'm going to see Kiss and Gojira, Pantera, and then there is more stuff coming up later in the summer. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and please comment. I like the comments. I like, I like to hear how people see these things, and I'm always curious about what you think how you experience the same stuff as me because it kind of points me in a new direction. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.